Today's video is about the best DAP ever created, like the most complete one. Unfortunately, it is a digital audio player, not a portable audio player. So it is digital audio player, not digital audio portable. Today's star is the Astel Enkern Acro CA1000T. This has a tube inside, actually two tubes inside, and is priced at 2,300 US dollars or euros. Usually when you get such an interesting product, it is a mixed bag. Usually they are a mixed bag. But this one is from Astel and Kern, so I had an open mind. I wanted to see how Astel and Kern would handle such a large device. And just look at this. It has one kilogram in weight. This is how much this one weighs. So I don't think you would typically take it outside, but I did. And to do this, I've used a bag from Didi Hi-Fi, another audio company. This one wasn't really intended for this and it is a very snug fit, but it works. So you have about enough space to push it down. Then you can actually close the bag and you could take it outside. And I did that, but yeah, it is not the most practical thing because you still would have to take it out of the bag to change the song. It can do one nifty trick, which is this. So you can have it looking like this. It looks like a little iPod or a smartphone stacked inside the cradle. Now we should start with the front. We have four headphone outputs, two balanced headphone outputs, 4.4 and 2.5 millimeters and two single-ended headphone outputs, 3.5 millimeters and 6.3 millimeters. Everything you could desire. Then at the back, things get even crazier. We have mini XLR outputs, RCA outputs, and that is it for the outputs. But we have coaxial input, optical input, 4.4 millimeter balanced line in. We have a data slash audio USB Type-C port and the charging Type-C port. Basically, you need two separate cables for this. Astel and Kern proceeded this way so that they would isolate noise from data. And this actually works very well in practice. Then there is a micro SD slot because this is a digital audio player. The micro SD slot is coated to support up to one terabyte micro SD cards, but in theory, it should support two terabytes with no trouble. It also has 256 gigabytes of internal memory, which can be used to store files for Tidal offline playback and Spotify and other streaming services. Did I tell you that it supports streaming services? Like that is a thing with Astel and Kern. You just go on this A symbol here, you get to services and you wouldn't believe how many services it can support. So we have V-Link, which I had no idea what it was. So I pressed on it like we typically do at Audio File Heaven and it supports YouTube. You can play YouTube videos on this without having your computer connected. Then it has Tidal, which is the usual. Then we have Spotify, Amazon Music, QQ Music, Move, Koboos, Deezer, Flow, Apple Music, Kikibox, Awa, Yandex Music, Bugs, and Melon. Basically, every single streaming services that is popular is supported on the Estel and Kern Acro CA1000T, like everything that is popular. Then, of course, the USB duct test, because with such a large unit, it most likely would sit on your desk and you will likely want to connect it to a computer. First test, it passed with zero trouble. So it has zero delay. It has zero milliseconds of delay, which is unusual because most dubs lately have been having some sort of delay, like 50 milliseconds or lower for some, but most of them didn't have a zero millisecond delay. But the Astel and Kern, yeah, it can have zero milliseconds of delay. And I'm excited about it. Allow me to be because I like it. Then we have the only dub that I know of, which can apply equalizer and crossfade sending on every single service. So it can apply those even on the USB dock, which is unusual. Once again, usually we don't have those things. Usually digital signal processing or DSPs are only applied if you play music from the micro SD card or the internal memory. But Acro CA1000T can apply them to the USB dock too. Then we have the typical Astel and Kern music player, which is the usual. Perfect. I have no trouble with it. You can seek on the songs. You can do basically everything, including shuffle. It has true gapless playback, replay gain options. Basically every single feature that you can think of, Astel and Kern Acro CA 1000T has. Then we come to the interesting parts that are about the sound. So basically this one has two tubes 
inside because it has two ducts and each duct processes the channels. Left channel one duct and one tube amplifier, right channel one duct and one tube amplifier or a solid state amplifier. Basically it is fully balanced. This is what fully balanced means. <laughs> the only more balanced thing that could have happened would have been for the file to be loaded in two processors so that it is sent by two microprocessors. Please don't do that. It is not needed. <laughs> two ducts, two amps, left and right channels have their own duct and their own amp. That is, I think, enough to have a grade up. There is this little LED at the back, which is now flashing an aqua color. This one actually tells you one of two things, either what the current data rate is or what the current amplifier you are using. So it can be this aqua color if you are using a hybrid setup with both the operational amplifiers, solid state amplifiers and the tube amplifiers, it can be orange and it can be other colors for the other setups. The battery life is just as insane. It has 10,000 milliampers of battery. Basically, it should have more battery than most power banks. But this battery life is enough for about up to 10 hours if you are playing on the single-ended ending and at about mid-volume or about 7 to 8 hours if you are playing on the balanced output and at a very high volume with a lot of screen on time. It has a ton of battery life, but it consumes a ton of battery life. So do you expect that it gets quite warm, which is not exactly correct. It gets mildly warm at best. It doesn't need a fan to cool off. And that has been one of my biggest criticisms of FIO high-end dubs. Like you are FIO, a company that is selling millions of dubs worldwide. I mean, they are selling thousands in Romania alone. And you create a dub that has a fan on it, like an audible fan. Like how, how did something like that get passed through R&D or research and development? How? How can you create a dub with a fan? It's not possible. It, it doesn't make any sense. Astel and Kern is creating special technology to isolate the sound from any type of microphonic noise from the case of the dub and Fio just adds a fun, like here, take a fun, have some noise. Like that was not okay. Like Fio was not okay with creating that. Well, Aster Lenkern is, they created a special technology named the Teraton Alpha technology, which allows the CA1000T to first off use a hybrid mode, which allows it to combine the sound of the tube amplifier with the sound of the solid state amplifier or the operational amplifier. And second, it isolates every single part of the audio circuit from the digital circuit and from the power circuit and everything else is just separated. So the power going into the audio is really clean. <clears throat> then we get to another problem, which would be a problem if this wasn't Aster again, it would have been a big problem, which is the overcharging. And that happens with some devices. For example, I did review the Cord Mojo and it had a problem. It always top up the charges because you leave it plugged in all the time and one kilogram of a DAP, you are supposed to leave this plugged in. And with Cord Mojo, that destroys the battery life in about six months. It is not usable anymore because the battery doesn't hold the charge anymore. With Aster again, that is not a problem. If it knows that you are going to be leaving it plugged in, it stops charging after a while so that it doesn't continuously destroy the battery. Another thing, Aster and Kern know how to make a good product. This is why we like Aster and Kern. This is why I like them and this is why I'm excited about this. The flippy display, no problems that I could have noticed. It's just a flippy display. I leave it usually like this because I like seeing something, but it works like this as well. You don't have to worry about that. I've used mainly the balanced headphone output in the 4.4 millimeter format because most of my headphones are in that format, but I've used it as a DAC2 for my Cyrus speaker amplifier in the back and it works great in both situations. Ah, one more thing. There are four gain options, which go from low, medium, high and super. And I've used it only on super because once again, this is Aster and Kern and they made sure that even the highest gain setting doesn't add any bit of noise. So it is all about volume control. You don't have to worry about having more noise with more gain. It also doesn't sound worse. And I usually use it above 25% regardless whether I'm using EMs or headphones. So that is okay. I don't need to use the lower gain modes. So I stick with super. There is a bit of hissing with very sensitive EMs because the output impedance of the balanced headphone output is two ohms. So you'll hear a faint hissing in the background with sensitive EMs, but that is not something that I can't live with. Like I can only hear it if there is no music playing and if I really focus on it. If I don't focus on it, it is not audible. With music playing, it is not audible. Everything is okay with that. So just a tiny bit of hissing. The single-ended headphone output has just one ohm of output impedance, which should render no hissing with any EM 
regardless of how sensitive it is. Then there is the other part, which is that the tubes usually have some interference from Wi-Fi. So I did the test. I turned on Bluetooth, I turned on Wi-Fi, I streamed YouTube and I placed this on the top of my Wi-Fi router so that I would get some kind of interference if it is sensitive to it. And I got none. There is no interference for the CA1000T, like no interference, even if you are using the full tube mode or the hybrid mode. So you don't have to worry about the tubes being noisy with Astel and Kern, they are not. I know that on other dubs that was a problem, but just look at this. They had enough space to create isolation for the tube amplifier. The tube amplifier, because the word tube may scare you off from purchasing such a wonderful device, the tubes have a rated life of 30,000 hours, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is three years of continuous usage or 10 years of actual eight hour a day usage, like 10 years. But then there is another thing. Usually if you are not playing music for a while, it will stop using the tube. So it is, it doesn't grow any warmer. The tube is not getting any power. So that is not a problem. You don't have to worry about the tubes burning out. They are probably not going to burn out faster than your computer will and you are likely going to upgrade and sell this and purchase another Astel and Kern DAP in 10 years of time. Like 10 years is a really long time. You are going to get married, you are going to have kids, you are going to achieve every single one of your dreams in 10 years and you still won't replace this. Like it's a lot of time, just take it from me. 10 years is a lot of time. Actually, also it is replaceable. Like you can replace that module. It is not that complicated to replace if you happen to just use the 30,000 hours somehow. With most of the technical and the specific parts covered of the CA1000T, I should talk about the sound, which is the most important part about this DAP. Like this is the reason you are purchasing it for the sound and to drive headphones. Like the sound of the duck is superb. It is very clean, very neutral, very detailed, very resolute and just crispy. It is a superb sound. But the headphone output is something else entirely. Like this is the only dub that I trust to use with both TMs or in-ear monitors and Audes LCD5. It can drive both of them and everything in between. There is no stopping to the CA1000T. I also experimented a bit with the tube mode because the tube and the operational amplifier or solid state mode have have very different tunings. The solid state amplifier has a very clean, very natural sound, but it is also a bit cold in tuning. It is very precise and very, very resolute. The tube sound is warmer, more fuzzy. It has some added euphonic effect to it, but at the same time, it has a bit more distortion because tubes usually have a slightly higher distortion. And the tube mode has some kind of higher level of harmonics to everything, which can be heard with most music. What I did, was use the hybrid mode right in the middle. That is like the sweet spot of the sound. There you have both the precision, the clarity and the dynamic of the solid state amplifier. And you have the warmth, the euphonics and the rich presentation of the two modes at the same time. The soundstage of the CA1000T is extremely wide, like really wide, very deep. And the instrument separation is outstanding. Like. It just has everything you would expect. The background noise level is zero. It is very black in the background, except for the slight hissing. And it has this super dynamic presentation. Like it is so impactful, so surprising. Everything just jumps at you. Everything is just so precise with it. It's like superb. Like I'm having the same feeling that I had with Ibeso DX320 when I first heard it. Like that one was using Row HHM ducks, which are a different new type of DAX. And uh, that one had the problem of having some slight USB delay. Like this one doesn't have that problem because it is using ESS DAC chips. Also that one was a portable while this one is not a portable. It is more closely comparable to the CP2000T which I also reviewed and the CP2000T has a similar sound but less driving power. The CA1000T has considerably better driving power. It has a longer battery life. Both of things are to be expected. And generally it can do basically the same things that the CP2000T but with more dynamics, better control, more explosion, better impact, better detail and it is probably the best sounding dub that I've heard today. Like it has the best dynamics overall from all the dubs, like combined everything. Just this one has the best overall dynamic, the best overall resolution and the best overall clarity. It also has this really interesting way of presenting the music. It is never harsh and it is never dry. It is really, really smooth and musical. It is rich. It is convincing. It, it is convincing me that that is music. It sounds natural. It sounds live. And I've been pairing it with both headphones and EMs. Imagine being a headphone buff or having a ton of 
headphones and wanting to enjoy your collection and going straight from Hyphiman HA1000 Stealth to Hyphiman Zvanar using the same source like that. That is crazy and that is crazy good. Aster and Kern typically recommends about 32 ohms of minimum headphone impedance, but I've used it with lower impedance and nothing bad happened. So that is recommended just so that you don't get any kind of hiss from the two ohms of headphone output impedance. Overall, how do you feel about this? I'm curious. Leave a comment. Tell me how do you feel about such a large yet such an effective DAP, like something that is designed to be large, but to sound large and to sound good. How do you feel? Would you purchase this? Would you want a DAP with tubes? You can check out my video on the CP2000T from Aster and Kern. That one also has a tube inside and also has the hybrid mode. It also has the Aster and Kern Teraton Alpha mode. Everything present on the CA1000T is present in that one as well. This one is made for desktop though and sounds much better. It doesn't have any kind of noise. And that is important because of course there is Fio who added the fun on a DAP like they thought that was a good idea. Someone at Fio thought this is growing hot, it is going to melt. What do we do? We add the fun. They didn't make the casing larger for their expensive DAPs, they just added a fun on it to cool it off. And there is another type of sound that usually plagues especially desktop users. For example, I have a large GPU in the back and it has something and it has a specific sound when it is running at high refresh rates. It has like a type of sound and that happens because the internal components grow smaller and larger while current is being pushed through them. It is named the piezoelectric sound. That is an effect used to create EM drivers. So it is a very harmful effect to some. And it doesn't have that noise either. There is absolutely zero noise with the CA1000T. That was my point. Zero noise, quiet, precise, clean, and good sounding. I hope that my video has been precise and clear. I hope if you have questions, I have answered them. And if not, leave a comment and I will try my best to answer them. I hope you have the loveliest of weeks out there. And if you decide to go for this, check out the links in the video description. Also, I have a PayPal link where you can donate if I'm an enjoyable host and if you want to help my channel survive. I thank you so much for watching. Also, if you want to help the channel, leave a like on this video, share the video, subscribe. You know the deal. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see each other really soon. Bye bye.